Hello, my name is Janaina, I'm talking from Brazil. Uh, first of all, I would like so much to thank you for the opportunity for being part of this international conference. And unfortunately, I can't be there with you in person, but I'm sure you're going to have a great productive meetings and some important exchanges of experience in the area of renewable energies. So today I'm going to talk to you about sustainable urban mobility, uh, some case studies in Brazil and in the US. I did my PhD and my postdoctoral research in this issue, so it's a very interesting issue for every country to invest in this area of sustainable urban mobility. Uh, I am a researcher at the Pontificial Catholic University of Paraná, South Brazil, and I also am researcher, a researcher at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, USA. So I hope you can hear me well. If I have some English trouble, please, uh, sorry for that. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to present um, an important nexus that is being discussed all around the world. That is the water, energy and food nexus. So with the population growth that is, uh, is going to add about 2.5 billion people in the world until 2050, we have uh, some concerns related mainly to urbanization that's going to increase to about 66% uh, if we take into account the world uh, index. And we have also some concerns about climate change. We need to address all of these uh, concerns. So the energy consumption is going to increase about 45% by 2050. Water consumption is going to increase about 30% and food consumption, consumption about 60%. So we have some important um, issues here to overcome and to solve. So what is the mainly link between them, the, the real nexus between them? Uh, our energy matrix needs to be more renewable in every country as we see. We need to, to treat more uh, water, to have a better quality of water, and we also need to produce a lot of food. So with the food waste that we have when we produce some foods, mainly in the livestock production, for example, we can, gener we can treat these wastes or this manure, for example, and uh, turn it into energy, mainly through biogas systems or biomethane one. And with these systems, we can also avoid water pollution and treat this water in a way that people can reuse this water for self-consumption even. So here we have an important link between these three elements. And in my case, the study is going to be focused on biomethane that can be used also for urban mobility. Okay. Uh, biomethane for sustainable urban mobility in Brazil and the U.S. is a reality. We have some trade-offs that we need to, to, to take into account uh, with water and food, but it can be a very important uh, renewable source of energy for urban mobility. So the transportation sector is a high energy consumer in Brazil and also in the U.S. In Brazil it represents about 33% and in the U.S. 28% of the total energy uh, use share. Fossil fuels are dominant in both countries. Uh, it represents about 76% in Brazil and 89% in the US. So it has a, a very important share here in both countries and we need to try to reduce this, uh, this representativeness in both countries. So in Brazil, the, main, the three main uh, fossil fuels that are used are mainly gasoline, diesel, ethanol is not considered for sure a fossil fuel, but we need to have other options. So the two main uh, fossil fuels are gasoline and diesel, and in the U.S. is uh, the same the same fuels. But in Brazil, we are starting to have another uh, another scenario in this uh, matrix. We are gonna we started having more ethanol and also biomethane in our matrix. And in the U.S., they are starting these researches and applications about that, but they are not so involved in the investment of, on renewable sources of energy. So here we can see the importance of renewable and sustainable sources for urban mobility mainly as we have in both countries we still have uh, fossil fuels dominant and the challenge for cities planning and management that we need to address climate change issues. So using renewable sources of energy for sure you can uh, decrease the CO2 levels, we, we can start mitigating some climate change issues. So here we have a, an important uh, image, important comparison between some, 
some carbon intensity of these different fuels and we can see here that biomethane has the lowest level uh, of greenhouse gas emissions. It's even virtually zero as the CO2 produced by recovering the biomethane has previously been captured uh, captured by the decomposing organic matter. So when we treat some wastes to generate biomethane, we are avoiding some water and air pollution. So that's why it's considered virtually zero. And it also can help cities to ad address climate change, change challenges, mainly with the use of these uh, renewable source of energy for urban mobility. We have here other concerns about electric. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the electricity here, in the next um, next chart but for you to know um, it's important for us to consider electric ve vehicles not as the cleanest one that exists because it's it depending on the electric matrix if the electric matrix is not sustainable is not renewable the electric vehicles are not going to be sustainable as well so we need to take a little bit um, uh, we need to take care when we say that electric vehicles are always sustainable. No, it depends on the electric matrix of the country, okay? So here we have a comparison between some fuels, for example, biomethane compared, let me put here, biomethane compared to diesel, uh, CNG, electric and hybrid electric vehicles. And we can see here that the biomethane has almost the same uh, yield of the other, other fuels, but it has 85% lower uh, CO2 emissions than diesel, for example. So they have some studies re held here in Brazil that proved that CO uh, biomethane uh, has a very representative lower, lowest range uh, related to CO2 emissions than compared to other fossil fuels. So in the USA, when I, I was talking about electric vehicles, in the USA, for example, the main sources of electric energy come from coal, about 33%, natural gas 33%, and nuclear energy 20%. All of them, for sure, are fossil fuels. So electric vehicles in the, in the related to the energy are not sustainable. They have, for sure, lower CO2 emissions when they operate, but not about the, the, the main source of energy okay in brazil we have a another uh, scenario in brazil the, uh, our electric matrix is very clean we have about 64 percent of our energy comes from hydropower so it's a renewable electric energy but in the last three years the cost of our electricity increased about 67 percent so we need to find and re make some research about better alternatives and diversification of this electric matrix and biomethane for sure is very is very they have a lot of good opportunities for both countries so it's possible to use it for urban mobility or even for the electric matrix we have here uh, a case study held in Paraná state that is uh, where curitiba is the capital of this state is located in south brazil uh, and this case study was held in itaipu by national that is the largest hydropower plant in terms of energy production in the world. So it's a huge hydropower plant and they are developing some interesting projects about renewable sources of energy. So Haki Farm is a farm that produces uh, chicken. So they created together with C uh, the International Center of Biogas, Scania Brazil, Itaipu Binational and Itaipu Technological Park Foundation. They developed the biomethane mobility project which means that they, uh, you, they use biomethane as the main matrix for the urban uh, transportation inside Itaipu Binational. And the biomethane come from chicken waste in this farm. The pilot project uh, considered uh, a bus and Euro 6 Scania bus, that is the most modern one in the world. Uh, so the bus ran about 3,000 kilometers in 19 days of, hundred, uh, of monitored tests. So they have a lot of interesting uh, results in this pilot test and biomethane proved to have 40% to be 40% more efficient than diesel and emitted 70% less green, greenhouse gases. So they monitored uh, all of the, the aspects in, during these 19 days about the engine, the engine for, of the, the bus for sure about the energy efficiency of biomethane, the, the greenhouse gas emissions, 
and they proved that it's a very interesting renewable source of energy even for uh, power transport uh, power transportation so to, to fuel uh, buses for urban mobility for example so they were very satisfied with these results and it proved that biomethane that comes from biogas can be a very interesting source of energy talking a little bit about Curitiba that is the capital of the state of Paraná. I'm going to present here the map and then I come back. So Curitiba is located here in South Brazil, is the capital of this state and is close to Argentina and Paraguay as well. And Itaipu by National that I told before, it's located here in the tribal frontier. So it, it's uh, in Brazil, but it's located in the border of Paraguay and in the border of Argentina. So we held this pilot project, project here, but the results are being applied also in Curitiba. So coming back, uh, Curitiba is the capital of the Paraná state and it's the most popular city in South Brazil with about a million nine hundred thousand inhabitants. Uh, its metro area is comprised by of 29 municipalities with a total population of about three uh, million inhabitants. So it's a huge area and we need to take uh, into account that we need to invest in more sustainable sources of energy for urban mobility for all of these people, for sure. So the city is recognized in Brazil and in the world as the reference in the public transportation system. Uh, in the 70s, they implemented the BRT. So Curitiba got known worldwide for being the, the cradle of BRT, Bus Rapid Transit, one of the most replicated high capacity transportation systems in the world. I know that some other cities like Bogota in Colombia has replied to this model and it's very efficient model of transportation and it consists in this, uh, and these uh, exclusive ur uh, bus lanes so buses stop, uh, always transit in this area and so they have another lanes for of low speed for cars and also for bicycles and pedestrians so they have an, an, an exclusive lane only for buses and it's also uh, very important for for people who have some kind of disability so they can easily access the bus and it's very safe for people. So this is a, a, an image of the how the buses uh, circulate in these special lanes and it has been considered one of the best transportations that we have in the world, the best system transportation that we have in the world and now Curitiba is, the, is starting to fill to fill these buses with um, re more renewable sources of energy. They have already implemented biomethane and sorry ethanol and biodiesel buses, and now they are starting to make some pilot projects with biomethane. So it's been a very interesting uh, pilot project that they are doing here as well. Uh, talking a little bit about Orlando, so the city of Orlando in Florida has about uh, 280,000 inhabitants and it lies at the heart of the greatest central Florida region comprised of Orange, Seminole and Osceola counties. Let me show you here, so many of you probably know Orlando better than Curitiba because it's more famous and more touristic for sure. So it's located here in, in central Florida. And so this three county region has a population of approximately 2.5 million people uh, having added an estimating, estimated uh, 56,000 people to be added in 2017. So um, they have a lot of people such as, such as much as Curitiba who needs public transportation for sure daily. So it's a city that they started now to invest in some better options taking into account uh, renewable sources of energy. So Orlando and metro area produces about 5,700 tons of uh, municipal, municipal solid wastes per day that is land fueled for sure. So now they are starting to invest a little bit more in biogas and biomethane projects. I did my postdoctoral research in Orlando. so. It was very interesting because I saw that they are starting some research that we already have started in Brazil like five years ago. So that's why it's very important to compare both cities and see that they have both of them have a lot of potentials, potential for biomethane and implementation for urban mobility. So the biogas production is about a million cubic meters, which represent a very good potential for biomethane per day. So they have. Uh, the possibility of filling a lot of buses for urban mobility and being more sustainable. So in this